Hola, Animigos, and welcome to Keyframers. I'm your host, Stephen Shaw, but you may know me as at Shashaw. And I'm your host, David Korshid, also known as at David K. Piena. Right now, we'll be giving a quick overview of the techniques used to build this awesome animation. Our show is supported by our sponsors, CodePen at CodePen.io, CSS Tricks at CSS-Tricks.com, and viewers like you. You can pledge at Patreon.com slash Keyframers uh, to support us, and links are available below. Yeah, and hey, you can also watch the full process of creating this animation from scratch after this with a lot more details about each of the techniques that we cover, so stay tuned. If you have any questions, ask us in the chat or leave a comment below, and we'll be happy to answer. All right, so a lot went into this uh, fun 3D cover flow in React animation uh, that we were that we were challenged to do, um, but the first thing that's kind of powering it is a is a reducer um, to get uh, get our kind of slide changing working. Why don't you break that down? Sure. The reducer is um, pretty straightforward. Uh, the reducer is one of those core React hooks that you should know if you are working with state management in React. Um, in this case, we have two events that we handle, or uh, React calls them actions, whatever, same thing. Uh, we have a next, which you can imagine if you press the next button or you press the right arrow key, if you want to add a feature, that would be the next event. And then we have a previous event. So then we do a little bit of math here. Basically, we're incrementing the slide index by one. But if we're going over the size dot length, we want to make sure that it cycles back to zero. And so that's what this modulo operator does, where basically if we're at index five and the total length is five and we add one, um, that becomes six, modulo five becomes one. So it sort of loops back, or sorry, four, and we go to five then. Anyway, it goes from <laughs> the last one to the first one. It just sort of loops around. Um, a little bit simpler logic over here. If we're already at the zero index, um, then we just loop back to the very last element, which is slides.length minus one. Otherwise, we just uh, subtract one. So if we're on the third uh, slide, then we'll go to the second. If we're on the second, we go to the first, and so on. And so this slide reducer, uh, we have an initial state of that slide index, and we're saying that we're starting at the very first element, and we put them in our components right over here. Uh, it's uh, react.useReducer. You pass in the producer, the initial state, and you get a tuple of two things. The state, which represents current state of the reducer, and dispatch for sending those events to the reducer in order to get an updated state. And then we could use those uh, in our application. You see we have buttons which are dispatching those events that the reducer expects. And we are using the states dot slide index right over here. Yes, and uh, we should note that we are having some trouble with the with the math overall for this. So that's why we have the <laughs> triple slides there, and the directions are a little yeah. are a little off. So whenever you look at this uh, final code demo, uh, the link in the in the description down below. Hopefully it, it's uh, it's a little better. Um, I, I just yeah. we're we're really blanking on this on this math um, off, the, off the top of our heads, but yeah, there's a there's a cool way to use uh, use reducer um, to kind of help you calculate uh, the position of a of uh, the next and previous um, slides. If you want to yeah. see more of how we built this, check out the full live video. Uh, it's got our entire process there and a lot of painstaking uh, math attempts. So <laughs> definitely check yep. that out. 